Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, should we get proceedings underway? Um, can I welcome you to the annual meeting of the Liverpool City Region Combined Authority and inform everyone present that this meeting is the first of ours that will be broadcast live on the Combined Authority website and will also be available for subsequent viewing. Um, by entering this room, it says here, you are consenting to be filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for filming purposes. <coughs> Okay, before we go on to the business, uh, it, it's always a sad duty when you have to report on someone's passing and Ben Malloy uh, died I think on, on Sunday and I think it would be appropriate given his input into the great work across the Liverpool city region that we show uh, our sign of respect uh, to his memory by having a minute silence. Um, can I welcome to the Chamber Councillor Pat Hackett, who's the leader of World Council, and Councillor David Baines, who's just actually left or uh, has been in the pre meeting, who's the leader of St. Helens Council, and to Sue Murphy as his deputy, who's here for this meeting, uh, to their uh, first meetings of the command authority, as well, of course, to all the retaining members. And just to, again, place on record our thanks to the predecessors from the two new leaders who were um, in Will's case, Councillor Phil Davis, and, of course, uh, Derek Long and St. Helen. So thanks for all their, their work on behalf of the combined authority. And, of course, with everything else um, being equal, as something comes in, something leaves, and today will be the last meeting um, of Margaret Carney, and I'm sure that Ian Mayer, who's a leader of the will make, maybe want to say something later. Uh, but she retires, uh, and we um, wish her all the very best. These aren't your microphones, so can members and officers please ensure that you press the microphone before speaking and turn it off afterwards? Uh, and finally, can we ensure that everybody has switched their phone onto silent or off, please? Okay, on the main agenda then, uh, items, uh, item one is apologies for absence, uh, Trudy. I've received apologies from Gideon van Toven, Councillor Moran, Councillor Brocott and Vice Honourable Jane Kennedy. Two is declarations for uh, members, um, three is uh, mail announcements and um, as people will have just seen um, earlier, Theresa May has uh, announced that she will resign as the Prime Minister on the 7th of June and uh, it's not in this chamber um, something that we will get too overly political about but I do think that it's important to the city region for us to recognise that this makes a no deal Brexit much more likely than it was even a, a few weeks ago and all the assessments show that a no deal Brexit for us would have a hugely negative impact on our economy and would make people poorer. 60% um, of our region's exports are with the EU after all and over a thousand of our businesses depend on that trade. Independent analysis shows that up to 15,000 jobs in the northwest are at risk from a WTO rules setup, which is the likely outcome of course of no deal. 
Uh, therefore, today I'm asking the City Regions Brexit Task Force to ensure that preparations for a no deal continue at pace and for officers in the CA's investment team to work on preparing proposals for how the combined authority could support local businesses to cope with the impact of a no deal. Um, I think it's a really important development and we obviously need to be abreast of what happens locally. Um, and we're already with uh, Tony Reeves leading in the North West on behalf of um, Brexit. We already had a, um, a good start, but we need to be nimble and agile because let's face it, we don't know when after the new leaders in, there may well be a general election and what the fallout from that could possibly be. Um, it's two years since the Manchester bomb, in fact, on Wednesday it was the anniversary and the uh, events of May the 22nd, 2017, devastated lives in Greater Manchester, we're all aware of that, the North West and beyond, but also um, to people in the Liverpool City region and I'm sure that all members will agree that this week, um, especially the City region stands shoulder to shoulder with Manchester and our thoughts are with those 22 victims and survivors of um, that terrible atrocity. I also want to thank our local authorities and in particular the Board Mayor Anderson and Nosley with um, Gray Morgan who supported us in lighting up a number of buildings. Um, orange, uh, Megan Hurley's favourite colour was orange, I don't know the full reasons behind it but if you've seen the pictures it did look spectacular and they went around the world but also the people in Manchester to a huge um, volume and chorus of thanks also saw those pictures about what we were doing here to mark that tribute to Megan um, but thank you for um, Andy Burns asked me to pass on his thanks from the people of the Manchester City region to um, us here anyone who's here about five, six, four, four, five weeks ago um, at the last meeting we'll know that there was a demonstration uh, in regard to um, climate issues and there were representatives from the climate strike group in Liverpool who came to see me on Wednesday and I think they're also going to see other leaders across the city region and they've um, asked for us to consider the issues around climate change and air quality and the environment um, and I listened to what they had to say. Um, I think young people feel particularly affected by these issues and quite rightly they will have to live long with the consequences of us poisoning the atmosphere and the, uh, the globe. So as a city region, I had a great chat with them and I've identified that we're making huge progress in this area. We're the first in the country who adopted a zero carbon target of 2040 first in the country. Uh, others subsequently have, have looked at that and one or two have even tried to go beyond that and we'll revisit that on a regular basis to make certain that it's not just an aspiration, it's something that's deliverable. Uh, we've launched a £10 million green investment fund. We've got the first fleet of 25 zero emission hydrogen buses coming onto our fleet in the city region next year. We've um, got the Mersey Tile Commission up and running. And we've already got one of the biggest wind farms in Europe in Liverpool Bay. So we're doing an awful lot, but I think, as always, we can do more and we'll continue to do more. Um, so after consulting with uh, Mayor Anson and the other leaders, um, we've decided as a city region that we can announce that we will declare a climate emergency in the Liverpool city region. And this action uh, is another symbol that we obviously understand the, the pressing issues of climate change and the urgent need to act and we'll ask officers to prepare a paper to come to the command authority, probably the next one, uh, providing further details of the commitments that the command authority is already making to this agenda. And on... Chair, can I, can I just, yeah? just, just make a, a, a point in, in relation to this issue, because it, it is crucially important, and I, I think for me, the, the fact that, um, and I make no apologies for saying it, the Labour Party, Took up the issue uh, at, at government level, 
uh, and uh, encouraged and cajoled uh, every member of every party in Parliament to accept the need to understand that we have a, a climate emergency on our hands. And I think what now we need to be seeing is that uh, government responds uh, to that by supporting regions like the Liverpool City region in absolutely dealing with the issues. It's no good having a, a statement made and then uh, parking some sort of certificate that everybody signs and agrees with and put in the door. I think we've already demonstrated as the city region, uh, and in particular with the innovation from yourself and from others, to actually uh, take that issue uh, right on board and deal with it here. And there's much, much more to do. In Liverpool ourselves, we've just uh, announced the setting up of a select committee and a cabinet post for uh, dealing with climate change within the city. And I'm sure uh, the leaders in the region will uh, similarly uh, look and respond to that. But there's much to do. It isn't just a question of, yes, uh, we accept this uh, climate change emergency. It is about taking action and it's about being bold and it's, it's about actually doing things that our grandchildren can benefit from in 20, 25 years. And we've got to take some tough decisions. That's on how we manage traffic, how, how, how we flood traffic, how we build for the future in housing, sustainable uh, transport, all those things. So I, I would just uh, say to people that uh, this uh, region, this authority, led by yourself and the cities, are fully committed to climate change, dealing with it, and working together with national governments to actually make the changes required. So it's not going to happen right overnight, but I do think that we can make real progress and show that it is just as much uh, in everybody's interest, not just the authority, but it's about individuals taking action themselves to help us, and that's the most important message. I couldn't agree more. I, of course, we were both in London for the Climate Summit and Clean Air Summit, um, where we both spoke to senior government members at that time. They might be there in a few weeks' time, of course, but we certainly put the case forward of what we're doing both in Liverpool and Liverpool City region. And, and we should celebrate the fact that we are ahead of the game in lots of these areas. But you're right, Joe, it's uh, all about what more can we do. Um, we will. It's as simple as that. We will do more. Um, the region at this weekend is hosting several major sporting events um, that will welcome thousands of visitors to our area and it underlines the importance of sport in the visitor economy. Um, Sunday you're going to see the Rock and Roll Marathon. I took place in this once. Um, yeah, it's quite a, an event. And there's the Magic Weekend Festival of Rugby League, which is in the for the first time. And of course, at Wembley, Tranmere will be playing in the playoff final. So good luck to all of those people who are um, participating in all of those activities. And of course, um, I'm sure that all the leaders, and especially Mayor Anderson and um, Councillor Morgan, will be joining me in wishing Liverpool Football Club every success in the forthcoming Champions League final against Spurs in Madrid. Um, the, uh, the stuff at Anfield in, in regard to the 12 Super League clubs is uh, um, going to include St. Helens, of course, and St. Helens, I, I, I'm a Saint supporter, um, they're closing the event on Sunday, so hopefully um, we'll be lifting um, some silver <coughs> um, on two or three weekends in succession for the city. <coughs> and just to conclude, um, people hopefully all took part in the EU elections yesterday and I genuinely hope that the people in our city region and I have to say throughout the North West will have rejected the poison and division of hate preachers like Tommy Robinson uh, myself, um, I think um, the leader of Sefton, the leader of Nosley were out on Sunday to witness some of the worst scenes that I've seen for 40 years in our city region when Tommy Robson and his uh, acolytes decided to pitch up in both Bootle and in Highton and as Gray Morgan said he chose Highton which was just a mile away from where there was a racist murder of Anthony Walker and he chose that on purpose and I wrote a piece for the New Statesman and I've highlighted that once again when that circus disappears 
It's for the councils, for us as command authority, but especially for the schools to have to pick up the pieces of the mess that's left behind. I won't repeat some of the comments that uh, we heard, um, but the P word was used. There were kids on parents' shoulders who heard those things and cannot now unhear those things, who may well go into school because they're impressionable and decide to repeat some of the things that they've heard. That's the poison of Tommy Robinson and the legacy of Tommy Robinson. And we need to do everything as local authorities and as a combined authority to ensure that those messages of hate aren't uh, embedded into the psyche of young kids. Um, absolute disgraceful scenes, I have to say. Okay, we'll move on to uh, item four, which is the minutes of the previous meeting of the Command Authority held on the 12th of April 2019. Um, they're included in pages one to 12, and can I ask that they are agreed, please? Five is a, a constitution update, and this is, as we all know, a bit of tidying up that we needed to do, and Jill Keel is going to take us through this report. changes that have been made to the, or proposed to be made to the constitution for your forthcoming municipal year. And it's the first year that um, I've been here and um, been in operation with the constitution, so I think it's a journey that will continue to keep updating the constitution from time to time. And the changes have been made in conjunction with colleagues from each of the constituent local authorities, and I hope that these are acceptable to you. Thank you. Thanks, Jill. Uh, approval of any constitutional changes requires a unanimous vote. Um, so can I therefore ask that we all agree the recommendations are set out on the report on page 13, please? And, uh, just for the record, any objections against that? So that was unanimous, uh, uh, Six is the combined authority nominations for this municipal year. And we have nominations um, <coughs> which are uh, for us to consider, but there's an updated version that's available also, so Frank's going to take us through this report. <coughs> Thank, thanks, Chair. So, as outlined, this, this report will detail the nominations of the Command Authority following the annual meetings of each of the constituent councils. Um, in section three, details there the statutory members of the Combined Authority. I won't go through each of the authorities and names, but uh, they're listed there, together with the substitutes from the um, local enterprise partnership. We have the appointment of Mr. Asif Hamid as lead representative there with the substitute of Paul Corcoran. Um, under section four, members are asked to appoint a deputy mayor stroke chair from the membership of the combined authority and this position will be referred to as deputy chair. The chair will be <coughs> later. Under section five, there's an uh, appointment to portfolio holders from the CA's um, members. Again, I'm not going to go through each of these individually, but the portfolios are listed there, and the portfolio nominations are listed there. It is worth highlighting that two of those nominations indicate non-voting co-opted members. Section 6 details associate membership of the combined authority for Warrington Borough Council and West Lancashire Borough Council. Um, 7 defines non voting members that have stopped previously for chair of the Transport Committee and the Right Honourable Jane Kennedy as Mercer Act Police and Crime Commissioner and for them to be co opted as non voting members. Section 8 picks up the appointment of the deputy portfolio holders and again, I won't go through them individually, but they are all listed there. Um, the chair will pick up um, one of the um, modifications for one of those deputy portfolio holders. Nine, mayoral advisors, uh, a reference there, and it's made clear that their, their appointment runs co-terminus with mayoral terms of office and will cease on the 7th of May 2020. Ten, appointment of officers to the combined authority. So in order to support the portfolio holders, the deputy portfolio holders, the head of paid service, treasurer, monitor officer, and directors of the CA will work um, where appropriate in consultation with the relevant chief executives of the constituent local authorities as, as co-leads on portfolio areas. The 
subject areas and lead officers and deputy officers listed at 10.2, but again, I won't go through that. Happy to commend the report to yourselves and, and the chair. Okay, so the report seeks approval for the appointment of a deputy chair for this year, 2019-20. Um, could I ask for nominations for the position of deputy chair, please? Yeah, sure. Sure, can I move to others? Is that second? Second, I'm sure. Uh, is that then agreed? Thank you. Um, in addition to this, can we agree the recommendations are set out in the updated report and also agree to the appointment of a can of councillor Gillian Wood, um, deputy portfolio holder for culture, tourism and the visitor economy at this moment? Is that agreed? Thank you. Um, seven is the appointments to the command authority committees for this year. Um, and I think Frank's going to take us through this again. Again, that, thanks Chair, I'll go through this, but I'll, again, I will preference individuals in this. But it's about outlining appointments to combined authority committees. Um, but the section three there, it gives appointments to the overview, overview and scrutiny committee, and that comprises of <coughs> members, political balance required within that, and their detail at the table in section three. The transport committee is at part two of section three and that has 24 members and they're detailed in the table. Audit governance committee is at section three of part three. And again, members and substitute members are defined there for membership of the audit and governance committee that has seven members. And similarly, appointments of disciplinary committee is at part four on that section, and that picks up the membership as being the seven members of the city region's combined authority. The paper also picks up the local access forum um, covered under the Countryside and Rights Away Act 2000, and defines that in accordance with that, the members of the forum are limited to a three-year period, and recognises that the forum advises decision-making organisations, it's proposed that that will report through to the Transport Advisory Group, which includes representation from the constituent local authorities and the combined authority. Okay, Chair, can the report to yourself? Okay, can we agree the appointments are set out in the updated report, please? Um, appointments to external organisations is item 8, and Jill is going to take us to this report. Thank you. Um, the recommendation is set out in paragraph 2.1 and it lists um, a, a number of bodies to whom we make various appointments. Those are then detailed in the following paragraphs in the report, so paragraphs 3, 4, 5. In relation to paragraph 6, which refers to the Mersey D Alliance, paragraph 6.4 of your report highlights that Councillor Pat Hackett will be a nomination from the combined authority. It incorrectly advises that uh, Mr. Asim Hamid will also be a representative from the combined authority. It is in fact a request that, Councillor, uh, that uh, Mr. Hamid um, becomes um, asked the Enterprise Partnership Board to nominate a member for us. Um, so if that amendment could be reflected in the agreements that's made to this report, that would be very grateful. Thank you very much. Can we um, agree the nominations and take note of the amendments to paragraph 6.4 and the left board will be asked to nominate a representative to the Mersey D Alliance for us. Taking this into account, therefore, can we agree the recommendations as set out on the updated report? Um, nine is an end of year review, and you might remember we did this last year. Um, and it provides us with a summary of some of the key achievements for 2018-19. Now look, these are by no means exhaustive and um, we're very cognizant of the fact that people have got busy lives so we're not going to go through every single thing that we've done. But we do need to uh, mark two years since we became a mayoral combined authority, which is just over five years since we formed a, a combined authority in itself. Um, what I think that the report does show is that we've made huge progress over those uh, periods as a city region and in, the in that time there's been real and tangible benefits to people right throughout the city region. So I think that leaders may wish to highlight specific things in their local authorities but I just wanted to touch on some of the highlights of that past 12 months or so. 
which include, for instance, securing £184 million in extra funding from government. That's in addition to the £900 million that was negotiated by the leaders in that deal signed in November 2015. We supported the Liverpool 2018 cultural programme with a £5 million investment. Joe Joe will talk about that. Brilliant for the city region and also include Wirral in that, but it brought visitors from around the world who will go away with a changed perception of what we're about. We've introduced the first UCAS style apprenticeship portal in the country um, and alongside that half price bus travel for apprentices. We opened the first new station, we shouldn't forget this, in uh, our network for 20 years at McGold North. And in addition to that, we uh, reopened the Holton Curve and we've seen the new trains just the other day coming into Lime Street. So it's not just about sort of those uh, ethereal things, we're opening up a, uh, a new line of track. It's the fact that we do have those services now coming in and people can travel directly from Liverpool to um, Wrexham. We opened a modernised station at Newton the Willows and uh, I think that's been a great benefit to the people there. I like the fact that because I was one of the people who opened it and your name gets um, included in the plaque, um, it's a station that Andy Burning has to use every single day and goes past that and uh, much to his chagrin he tells me he sees the reminder of what we're doing in uh, an area that affects them as well. Uh, we took devolved control of the £52 million pound adult education budget, which Ian Mayer and the team did such a great uh, sterling job on. We introduced the first, for the first time um, since I think 1992, a one pound crossing, a, a one pound fast tag for Liverpool City regions um, uh, in the tunnels. We've established uh, one front door, a single point of contact for the city region investment inquiries. We've also got the £6 million town centre fund, and we've invested £16 million into a 600 kilometre cycling and walking route. And we'll have further announcements later on in the year about how we can even go above and beyond what we've done there. That's all, all sorts of specific stuff, but we've also uh, in addition to these things, have approved around £50 million pounds this year from the Strategic Investment Fund into projects, smaller projects, but right the way around the city region. It's a real benefit to those leaders who took that great decision um, all those years ago and it's starting to pay dividends now we're seeing delivery. And I think everyone will agree that it shows that while the funding will receive through devolution, it doesn't in any way make up for the huge cuts to public services in the city region, the councils which are being hollowed out by 60 odd percent cuts. We are demonstrably better off as a city region with <coughs> devolution than if we hadn't have had it. Just imagine where we'd be if we didn't sign that agreement. So um, that's the general stuff. I'm sure that some of the leaders might want to tease out um, things in their areas. Does anybody want to contribute? Um, Council Morgan? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, just to some of those new points of view, I'd just like to um, thank the combined authority because the council received the, a contribution of uh, six and a half million pounds towards the construction of the Shakespeare North Theatre. Without this uh, contribution, the council would have struggled to, to meet the funding to build the, the theatre. I'm glad to say now um, that the, the theatre is now coming out the ground, and because of the support of the combined authority, that wouldn't have been possible. Just staying on the subject within to Prescott as well, um, we received a grant uh, of all, just under £8 million pounds towards uh, connecting Prescott, and this will include um, the, the, the at railway station at Prescott, new platforms, new lifts, so it's accessible for everybody. And then that we, uh, the, the grant also includes public realm leading up to the theatre with shared walkways and, and cycle paths as well, so well received their chairs of I'd like to put it on record our gratitude for those those grants. But also um, just a couple of examples within those as well on creating new jobs. Um, the, the Alchemy Business Park, we've just built a £104,000 uh, square feet of uh, industrial space that can be used for logistics, which will create hundreds of jobs. And that was not possible without receiving a grant of the, lo of the local grow, grow funds of £1.8 million. And just the last one, Chair, um, the completion has just finished over 218,000 square feet 
Speckliff Developments on Nosley Industrial Park. And that was part funded through um, a Chrysalis fund of five and a half million pounds. This is the largest Speckliff unit to be built in the city region for more than a, for more than a decade. Again, this couldn't have happened without the support of the Combined Authority. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Graeme. Um, just, just a, I think it would be absolutely uh, amiss, really, to uh, because we're at a, a, a juncture where I, I've read just recently, because the local authorities have made a contribution to the run of the CA, we've heard all kinds of, of nonsense about spare maze and why we've got the CA. And, and I just need to remind people, and it's absolutely right that you pointed out the fact that local authorities in the city need to have been bludgeoned absolutely bludgeoned by austerity cuts for the last 10 years. But if we wouldn't have engaged in devolution and we wouldn't have done the things that we've done, we would absolutely be well worse off than we currently are. And we have to remind ourselves sometimes of what devolution is about. Devolution isn't just about trying to take the equivalent money that the Exchequer has took from us. It's actually about taking control of our own destiny. That's what it was about. That's what it was always about. And the fact that we've been able to take just under a billion pound over 30 years of gain share, that's 30 million every single year, and plus the SIF money, all of that money in our control, not just yet maybe you know, replacing some of the money that the North West Development Agency or any of the agencies have, but it's actually now under our strategic control to influence and implement changes that are making a real difference. And every single year, every single year, the combined authority, through its investments, has contributed to about £150 million uplift in GVA to the city region. That's the equivalent of about 10,000 jobs. That's as a result of the CA being in place for the last four years. And I can tell you, the, you know, the 45,000 jobs that depend on the cultural sector, the rocket fuel for our economy in the city region, without the CA's involvement, and, and we wouldn't have had the Terracotta Army, we wouldn't have had the, 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 the Giants, we wouldn't have had many of the things that we have in the city that actually fuels you know, visitors and the tourist economy. And, you know, I can tell you equally that when I look at what the CA has contributed to Liverpool. You know, I could talk for an hour about it, but equally, the benefits for the whole city region. 72% of the people that work in Liverpool city centre come from the city region. I don't begrudge that, by the way, colleagues. I, I, I welcome that, although I do support very, very uh, yearly, annually, uh, the uh, production of block up the I, I, I support that every year. But seriously, 72% of the jobs in Liverpool and the city centre come from, from the city region. And when we, we actually look at what's being done, you know, Pall Mall, there is no grey day office space in Liverpool, and certainly no office space, quality office space. And the three and a half million that we got from the CA to develop our Pall Mall is going to be a game changer for the city. So we can compete with Manchester, Leeds, Birmingham, and attract some of the businesses here, BDO, one of the biggest organisations, legal, accountancy, financial, uh, are growing by 300% their staff and they need space. If they don't get space, they'll go elsewhere. So that injection of money, Paddington Village, Paddington Village is a game changer for the region. Without the 12 million that we received from the CX, Paddington Village wouldn't be happening. And yet it's going to provide a medical digital education campus, medical campus, right next to the Royal Liverpool Hospital. 1,500 jobs, 1,500 quality high-tech jobs, and £7 million worth of business rates coming into Liverpool as a result of that investment. There's £300 million being spent on the interconnection movement strategy in two phases in the city of Liverpool as a result of the CA investment. 20 million pound going into the cruise liner terminal. 20 million pound going in to connect the cruise liner terminal to our roads and the Strand and Leeds Street. I could go on. It is absolutely crucial that people get the head round the fact that the CA exists, the Metro Mayor exists to actually bring benefits to this region. It is, 
it does and it will get better and I just think you know people need to come to these meetings make themselves aware of all the facts and they'll see for themselves exactly the value and the benefits of having a combined authority in a metro way and devolution where we take control of our own destiny. Anybody else? Yeah, Pat? Thanks, uh, thanks Chair. I wouldn't disagree with the word Joe said and we all remember the days when there was plenty of public money around uh, which was a real boost for, uh, for the local economies. But we are where we are as they say and it's important that the money that's coming in now through the city region and devolution, as, as explained by Joe, that we use it to maximise uh, for the benefits of our brothers, and we all do. And there's a number of ones on the well, uh, included obviously this last year uh, as the butter of culture. Uh, not a huge boost for the economy on the well, and not least working with Liverpool with the Giants. That's made, made a hell of a difference, and I think everybody over there was absolutely amazed. Uh, at the, uh, the extent of, of, of that event and what it brought in to the area and shows what we can do when we're all working together and I think that's going to continue at least uh, around around these tables. Um, we also have, uh, what else we have? We have the, the town centre fund, we benefit from that uh, areas, areas of, of the world and we're looking to put uh, business cases together for SIP funding which I think is quite important, I was having, was having that, that, that talk to you. Um, obviously, the 2.3 million for the 841 corridor improvements was, 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 was huge, and the, as you might rightly said, the pound uh, fast tag benefits were the residents the most. Um, yeah, so, so the, you know, in, in general, I think it is right that that money that's coming in, we, uh, we use that and we keep lobbying for more. And devolution, uh, as, as Joe said, um, it's a word that's used that people don't understand, and we do need to go further with it, without a doubt. Uh, we all agree with that, but it's how you do it. Uh, and as long as we keep working together, I'm convinced we will do it. Thanks, Chair. Absolutely right. Uh, Steve? Um, just to follow up on what Joe said, really, I think I think one of the things, one of the key criteria we're missing through the whole devolution deal and through the Mayor's um, remit is, is that the outside perception is showing us as a, a joint report in our city region, which is something that's created change. I think when you look at us on a national perspective, we talk about some of the investments that are happening in the job creation, but also on an international platform, as you know yourself, Mary, when we, we, we had a meeting the other day with, with some uh, individual from India who were talking to us about having that one-stop shop and how the perception has changed of our city region, I think, in you know, a credit to the leaders and actually coming together and making this happen. I think the devolution deal in itself and the ability in central government, having not been involved in the political scene at all, but I haven't gone and seen it now on a, on a national level and on an international level. I think it's a great opportunity to be now on the cusp of change. And I think, you know, we have to try, and this is a communications thing for me, across letting everybody know, and our residents know in the city region, is that we're actually going to change and we've got to, we've got to just carry on driving that change forward. And I think politically, as long as we can carry on the political cooperation um, and relationships we've got at this moment in time, I think you're going to see a big change. So, my commitments go out to the city region leader. I think you're doing a great job on bringing it all together. I'm not saying we're there, we still have a long way to go, but I'm just saying the devolution deal itself and the uh, ability to do things jointly together and the perception outside is a massive change. So, um, just to pick up on Joe mentioned um, the jobs. 9,000 is a direct result of those uh, investments and 5,500 apprenticeships. Every one of those hopefully then goes on to a career that they would not have had the opportunity for if it hadn't been for the funding that we got because of uh, a decision that was taken in 2015. Um, do the, uh, sorry, can we therefore agree the recommendations are set out on page 269, please? Ten is a uh, public question time. We did receive two questions from Josie Mullen, um, who was here last time. She's actually unable to attend today, um, she's poorly, so the Monitor Officer will read out her questions on her be behalf. Jill, will you do them, them two questions, please? Um, in Tracy, Mr Mayor, um, Ms Mullins raised the concern that there's no opportunity to speak at these meetings of the Combined Authority, stating that questions can be read out, but the member of the public can't participate in discussion. She's asked us to revisit the um, opportunity about the public questions 
um, to say that um, the slot can be changed and to permit limited dialogue between the public and the mayor based on the questions submitted. Okay, as people will know, we will provide a formal uh, and comprehensive written response within the 10 days for um, a brief verb update because she's not here and, and I perhaps would have said more. But people have to understand that these meetings are business meetings of the combined authority and as such they are um, about what we need to get through to get agreement for, to do some of those great things that people have spoken about and question time reflects the formalities of that. Members of the public can submit questions to the combined authority and um, we then will make certain that those questions are answered. We allocate half an hour and that seemed to be uh, of some confusion last time because people said there's plenty of time but if we get no questions we're not just literally going to sit around for half an hour um, while that time ebbs away. Half an hour is up to half an hour for those questions. Last time we only had two questions, we responded verbally, there's an opportunity for a supplementary and then we moved on business and then that's perhaps um, why that question has been posed. But we have lots of other opportunities. We have individual councils who meet, and the questions can be put to councillors. I also have made all question times in each of the six districts so people can come and put questions down and ask questions in an open forum. Um, but we recognise that um, not everyone can attend, and that's why we have this as an opportunity to, for people to put some questions down. Um, with that said, we'll um, just briefly go on to question two, and then I'll, I'll give a brief verbal on that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, this relates to the Year of the Environment, so asking that it starts a conversation about how we protect and preserve natural assets for future generations. She's concerned and says that it's vitally important that the protection of green space park and green belt, green wedge is discussed. She's asked if you, as Metro Mayor, would consider financing a conference for green groups within the city region to debate and disseminate information protect, reprotecting green heritage and can this be, this be organised in conjunction with those green groups? Okay, just briefly, and um, we will uh, respond to the specifics of the points, but um, we take part in the uh, Year of the Environment, but we don't run it. It's not a combined authority event. It's um, actually Nature Connected and a whole host of different groups who have come together and it is there for those people who are involved in uh, environmental considerations to decide on what the um, programme of events throughout 2019 are. Um, but of course we want to ensure that there's a legacy and we'll build on, on that. Uh, but the important thing is that all of that's by no means the only thing that we do. So I'll just give you couple of brief examples. Uh, energy and environment is one of the key growth sectors, we've identified that in our um, strategy and it already has 1,400 businesses and 27,000 people who work in it, so that includes, we've got one of your largest offshore wind farms as we know, we're becoming one of the centres for hydrogen capture and recovery which is happening in Holton. Uh, we're providing clean fuel to power trains and Holton we're going to do hydrogen manufacturing trains. We're buying new hydrogen buses and we've got um, electric buses. We've got some of the um, most environmentally friendly buses in the whole country. Um, we're even doing stuff on trying to ensure that our homes, and especially those with um, energy poverty, are um, better lagged and um, insulated. Just two weeks ago, we've We've spoken about the next phase of the Mersey Tidal Power Scheme and I went to government and I'm trying to get government to provide support but if they don't we'll go ahead and do it anyway uh, if we get through the business case. Um, so we could be um, Britain's renewable energy coast and Rob 